Welcome back savages. In this video, we are going to talk about Ethereum 2.0 and what we can expect over the next couple of years. So let's get into it. As a GPU miner, it's probably best for sanity's sake to remember that the Ethereum project as a whole does not care and has never cared whether or not GPU or ASIC miners are making any profits or have anything to do. Giving us something to mine is not really part of their roadmap. Uh, Vitalik has always been a proponent of Ethereum proof, going to proof of stake for the following reasons according to him. There is more security at the same cost level. Any network attacks are less harmful and easier to recover from than they are with proof of work and security measures, measures can be implemented logically instead of physically. Proof of stake is more decentralized. This is a point of of his that I kind of struggle with is it more decentralized the same people who have a GPU and their gaming PC that can fire up a miner and mine ethereum are not necessarily the same people that have 32 ETH laying around to stake even if you have a few mining rigs it can take a really long time to mine 32 ETH so I think Vit Vitalik and I will just have to agree to disagree on this I do not think Proof of stake favors decentralization as I see it right at the moment. The genesis block of the Ethereum beacon chain will be on December 1st. This means in a mad rush once the deadline of November 24th was getting close, enough ETH, which was uh, 524,288, were staked through the ETH2 launchpad to have the beacon chain genesis block occur on the projected date of December 1st. Some people are claiming that Vitalik staked 3200 ETH to get them over the threshold for a December 1st launch, but it looks like he staked early November, and to be honest, 3200 ETH isn't that much of what's required to launch the beacon genesis block. It only accounts for less than half a percent of the total of what's being staked right now. It's safe to say that while Vitalik is locking up 1.5 million USD worth of ETH is significant for a single entity, his stake is nowhere near as large as many others. You have IBC Group over here, they're dropping 20,000 ETH or over 10 million USD worth. Then you have Bitcoin Suisse coming in with 100,000 ETH or over 52 million USD worth. These, uh, these large stakers will have hundreds or thousands of customers and, will, and while the company will control the keys, you know, it's one of those not your keys, not your crypto scenarios, they will be custodial staking for their customers. So they'll be staking the Ethereum and then earning those rewards and taking a percentage of those rewards. I figured these services would be available to the folks that don't have 32 ETH or the technical know-how on their own to stake, but still would like to participate in the network from a stake, staking point of view. It does look like they are going to use some type of crypto certificates that says they seem to be fancy paper wallets that one can transfer, can securely transfer. Right now, the annual percentage rate for staking your ETH has dropped from 21.6 at the top down to, and that's whenever you have that minimum of 524,288 ETH. Uh, that was at 21.6% APR. It's down to 17.5 or so right now. Uh, because of the number of ETH staked is now around 801,000, so it's actually probably a little bit less than 17.5%. And you know, the more that stake, the lower the APR. That's the way it works. I can show you right here. Looks like it's 17.5 right now is the APR, the annual percentage rate. 
You might be asking yourself, like I was, and like a lot of people are probably asking theirsel themselves, so why should Ethereum upgrade or transition to 2.0 in the first place? ETH 2.0 will incorporate shard chains, allowing for more transactions per second and help prevent network overload. So in short, the main focus of ETH 2 is scalability and performance through sharding. Think of sharding or shard chains as a distributed network and transaction ledger where each segment can come to consensus about their subsets transactions on their own. Each shard will then rely on the beacon chain to ensure all shards are in sync. This ETH 2.0 phase zero is just a contract on the current ETH network as we know it right now and will include only the beacon chain allowing for a one-way transaction from the ETH mainnet to the ETH2 beacon chain. The ETH staked on ETH2 beacon chain must remain there for about two years it's looking like. The beacon chain won't be fully operational since there won't be any shards for it to synchronize but what it will be responsible for is tracking the staked ETH rewards and registering validators. Validators is just another term for stakers. Something very important to note in this phase zero is that staking your ETH is a one-way transaction, which means that your ETH will be staked and not withdrawable for years until phase 1.5 shard chains is live. And this is actually 1.5 is when ETH mainnet becomes one of the shards managed by the beacon chain. Supposedly, phase 1.5 will be next year in 2021. Knowing what we know about supply and demand, what do you think will happen to the value of Ethereum after Beacon launches? We know that millions will likely be locked up for two years, taken out of circulation, and at the same time, there will also be new buyers of Ethereum that want to stake uh, as well. We, we saw that with the big companies, the institutions actually buying or staking 100,000 ETH or 10,000 ETH, uh, you know, that there, there, there will be more doing that. This is not financial advice, of course. So on December 1st, the Beacon Chain or Phase 0 of ETH2 will launch. In case you were wondering, ETH2 has three phases. Phase 0 is the Beacon Chain itself. Phase 1 is shards. And phase two is execution of the full POS and the docking and all that stuff. This is whenever the main net will need to, the main Ethereum will need to dock with the beacon chain. This is where it's, it's kind of a, there's a 1.5, a phase 1.5 in between these two. Uh, so if these dates are accurate, you've got 2021 here and 2022 here. So maybe you're looking at halfway through 2022 before the proof of work main net goes offline to where you can no longer mine it uh, so i don't know it doesn't look that bad to me we've got some time here guys you're probably wondering what does all this mean for ethereum miners well it means that in one to two years hopefully closer to two we will no longer be able to mine ethereum with our gpus so big sad face right now once eth2 phase two is launched, the Ethereum proof of work blockchain will no longer be needed. So we'll have to point our rigs at another project. There's a few ways to look at this, but something to keep in mind is that the Ethereum network is extremely large. There's lots of hash rate. So for example, if, if everyone changes over to Ethereum Classic, it could really be disastrous for that project's value. And you might be wondering, well, why? Why would it be a disaster? Well, if you look at the hash rate of those networks, you can see that ETC is at 4.47 and Ethereum is at two, that's a terahash per second. And Ethereum is at 251.08 terahash per second, which uh, that is a 56 X. So Ethereum is 56 times the size of the Ethereum Classics network. So what do you think that'll do to the mining rewards if all those miners switch to ETC after ETH goes to full POS? All we can really be sure of is that it won't be good for profits, that's for sure. I would bet that initially it'll be awful, but as time goes on and people start looking at 
how terrible the profits are, they'll probably power down their rigs or find some spec place to mine instead. If enough people capitulate, you'll see the profits start to come back. Maybe the ETC folks are actually looking at into ways to mitigate that initial shock. I don't know for sure. If they aren't, they probably should at least consider it. ETC really has the opportunity to become the darling of GPU miners since it's the original Ethereum chain in the first place. Different vision now, but you know, you get my point. This added hash rate will no doubt offer some level of security from inexpensive 51% attacks like we've seen lately against the ETC blockchain, along with their new ECIP 1099 being implemented in a hard fork very soon. I think it's actually tomorrow. The current ETC DAG size is 3.91 gig, Four, so that means 4 gig GPUs are becoming obsolete even though they make up a large portion of the network hash rate. This Thanos hard fork will reduce the DAG size from 3.94 down to 2.47 or so and should allow 4 gig GPUs to mine ETC for an additional 3 years. That's pretty significant. The DAG is the directed acyclic graph and allows ETH hash proof of work to function. It's generated every epoch or epoch, 30K blocks, that's uh, 30,000 blocks or about 100 hours and increases in size each time. So as time goes on, the DAG gets larger and it makes lower GPU because it's loaded into memory, it makes those lower memory capacity GPUs uh, less efficient or possibly unusable at all. As long as Ethereum has a proof of work network or shard to mine with GPUs, it looks like we'll be able to mine on six, G six gig GPUs until about September 15th, 2023. And if things go real sideways and ETH2 phase 1.5 doesn't come, until, come in until after June 10th, 2026, we'll still be mining with our eight gigabyte GPUs until then. If you choose to stake, only use this launch pad right here, launchpad.ethereum.org to set it up and be sure to validate the address you are sending the ETH to through the launch pad. Do not send your ETH to the address itself. Uh, you need to use this method, get started and go through the process so that it's done correctly. So I'd like to point out that after, you know, right, this, this is a good graph because right now we are right here, 800,000 ETH staked. So the APR is 17.5%. And you can see how this is a graph that shows over time as more ETH is staked down at the bottom here, this is in millions. So if a million ETH are staked, you're looking at 15.7% APR. If 2 million are staked, you're looking at 11.1. .1. So that's why it was important to get in early with this staking. I know it launches on December 1st, so you still have a little bit of time. We've already met the threshold, so you'll be able to uh, start earning that APR right away. But it looks like it is 17.5% right now. Uh, you know, I don't see a whole lot happening between now and launch date. Maybe we'll get up to 1.5 million or something like that so we might be down to 12.8 on the launch date i don't know that's just a random guess there but you can see as time goes on not time but as more eth is staked the apr goes down and this is a great function because you see at some point in here it's going it has to level out because people are going to say like well I don't want to stake for, I don't want to lock up 32 ETH for 8%. So you're going to see some leveling out, but it also has to do with the value of ETH. So if more people want to stake and earn that APR, then the value of ETH will go up because there'll be less of them in, in circulation. So this is a, this is a pretty genius um, <laughs> graph here and way to the uh, way to do the APR and the rewards and all that stuff pretty crazy but the minimum looks like it's 4.9 uh, I don't know if maybe maybe there's a max I think there's a max of 10 million staked or something like that uh, so the minimum is going to be 4.9 percent APR but if we ever got to that point could you imagine the value of ETH right there at 10 million staked I mean, the value of ETH would have to be pretty high for this to make sense, right? Uh, 
so I uh, hope you can see like the, the genius of this. This is really good. As GPU miners, we probably shouldn't get too upset right away. This was all planned. It's part of Ethereum's original roadmap. On the bright side, we probably have another year or two before GPU mining will be phased out altogether. So that's something to be excited about since there will be more people staking and removing ETH from circulation. Plus, we'll probably see some more DeFi and high transaction fees, which will be nice for miners. You know, cheer up, folks. The next year should be really good for ETH mining. I'm seeing probably the next year is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. If this video was useful or at least entertaining to you, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell to make sure that you are notified when I go live or post new content. And thanks always for watching and stay savage, everybody.